chapter number 9. We'll begin reading in verse number 23 and read three verses together. Acts chapter 9, verse 23. Those of you that have been in Sunday school are very familiar with these verses of Scripture. We just dealt with them here a couple of weeks ago in Sunday school. Acts chapter 9, verse 23. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. Speaking of Saul, but their laying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Verse 25, our text. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. For weeks now, we've been looking at the thought of sweet things out of dark places. Sweet things out of dark places. We've just got done looking about five or six different dark places in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I guess outside of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no one else that would be more supremely qualified to testify about sweet things coming out of dark places of life than the Apostle Paul or Saul here in this text. Saul's very ministry was to be one of suffering for Jesus. The next three sermons that we'll look at in this series, we will look at three different very uh, interesting and, and rememberable dark places in the life and ministry of the Apostle Paul. You remember our text for this series, Isaiah 45, verse number 3. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden things of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. The Lord says he puts us in the dark places and gives us treasures in them for the sole purpose of knowing the Lord in a more personal way. The Apostle Paul said himself about his own ministry of suffering in the dark many times. He said in Philippians that I may know him. How are you going to know him better, Paul? And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. God's going to help me know him better through the dark places of my life. It is Paul that said he besought the Lord three times for that infirmity in the flesh. Take it from me. And the Lord said, I'm not going to do it. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And Paul said, most gladly, therefore, if I'm going to get to know him better, if I'm going to get to experience him greater, then most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my dark place, in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And here in the text, just for a minute, I just want to show you verse number 25 where the Bible gives us this dark scene early in the life of the apostle Paul when he's still called Saul where the disciples took him by night and let him down by the wall in a basket. And I'd like to preach just for a minute tonight on holding the rope in dark places holding the rope in dark places. You realize tonight it, it's, it's highly, highly dependent on Paul's survival that somebody stays up on the wall in this window and holds the rope even in a dark season and a dark place of Paul's life tonight. There has to be some disciples. There has to be some faithful people that will be willing to hold that rope and lower him down so that God can get the glory out of his life that he wants to from our dear brother Paul. I want to just say three things real quick and we'll be done. I'm, I'm sitting here tonight and I'm watching what's going on here in the singing and listen to the testimonies and watching God move around. And I just say tonight, it is highly predicated on all of us to hold the rope tonight. 
It is highly important for all of us, every daddy, every mama, every papa and grandma to grab a hold of the rope that God has given us and hang on with everything that we've got because there are important things that we are partaking in in this place tonight. Let me just say this real quick and I'll be done. The first thing we see in this holding of the rope in the dark place is we see the benefits of the church. I heard Brother Roger back here giving his testimony and he talked about the benefits of the Lord and the benefits of serving God. I want you to notice who it is that's holding the rope. The Bible said in verse 25, then the disciples. Who is this? This is the church in that area. It is the church that's holding the rope for Paul. I thought to myself, it's interesting, Brother Travis, supposing after Paul got saved, he said, you know what? I don't need the church. I don't need no help. I just go out here and live for God on my own. I just do my own thing. Well, when life hits the skids and then things come crashing down, these people trying to kill him, he'd have had no one to come to his aid. He would have had no one to come to his rescue. He would have had no one holding the rope out of this window to let him down to save safety and to let him down so he could continue walking with the Lord. Listen to what I'm fixing to say. There's a lot of people that want the benefits of the church without being a part of the church tonight. I, 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 I seen years ago, years ago, I seen a, 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 a Facebook post, some of that degree, of, of a girl that had left a good Bible preaching, Bible teaching Baptist church, and she got on the outs with the church, and she left, and she got out, and she ended up, you know, uh, 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 raising a child by herself, and, and such as that. And there was a post on Facebook after she'd done God church years later, and she, there's, it's, the post said this, can anyone please help this girl with some meals and help this girl getting out of the hospital with this baby by herself? She needs some help. I thought to myself, she'd had all the help she needed if she'd have just stayed at the house of God. They'd have been over backwards helping her with anything she needed if she just stayed at the church. Instead, she wants the benefits of the church without being part of the church. You listen to me tonight, you may not think the church is important, but there's going to come a day when the devil's going to ambush your life. There's going to come a day where you're going to be like Paul and you're going to need somebody on your side. And I'd just like to say I thank God for a place and I thank God for a people that when I need somebody to hold the rope, when I need somebody to pray for me, when I need somebody to text me, when I need somebody to encourage me, I'm glad there is some people. I'm glad I'm part of a group of folk that's holding the rope by prayer holding the rope by support and they're helping my strength in God tonight you say what do I need hold the rope hold the rope for the benefit of other people in life tonight there's nothing like the benefits of the local assembly you say what kind of benefits good gracious we've seen some benefits I mean I don't know about you my, my faith has been strengthened tonight I've listened to all these folk testify this evening, and I've got strength from every single testimony that's been given tonight. That's been a benefit to my soul. I sit over there and listen to this choir, get up and sing in full throat, and give glory to God. Son, that was a benefit to my soul. Uh, brother, look here. I sit over there and listen to the Fields family and our band play and worship God together. That's a benefit to my soul. Can I just be honest with you? I, 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 I try and do my best that we when you come in, I try and always be the same. I try and all, it don't matter how good of a day or how bad a day or bad a week or how tired I am. I try and always be the same. I'm just going to bear my soul here for just a minute. All right? I was tired today. I was tired. I don't normally, I don't know, I try not to preach every night of my life anymore. The older I'm getting, the more I feel it taking a toll on my body. I don't know if you, how much preaching you've done, but preaching will take a tax on your mind, on your body, and on your spirit. It's a body, soul, 
soul and spirit exercise. I, I, I've done, you say, well, that's because you've never worked a job. Hogwash, for years I worked in the auto glass business out in the sun, in the heat, and in the cold in the winter. And I found this out. Working a regular job, it's a body tax, and it's mentally stressing, but it didn't tax my soul. But there's something about when you're every night trying to help someone, and you're really putting your heart in it, it's a body, soul, and spirit tax. And I preached last Sunday morning, Sunday night here, preached Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, driving back and forth to Brother Goodman's, preached Thursday night Institute and Thursday night here, then went Friday night over to Brother Martin's and heard preaching, and then Saturday went to the street and preached over there and got blessed out by the Martin Luther King Jr. crowd, and then then we did, we did, and then and then went and preached last night. I don't like to preach on Saturday nights, Brother Keith, because I like to get in bed early, because I like to get up about 4.30 in the morning to get over to my office and such to get my mind ready. And I got in bed late last night. I'll just be honest. I texted my wife this afternoon, Brother David, and I said, baby, I think after church, I'm just going to come home. I don't want to eat no dinner. I'm tired. I, I feel it in my body. I'm wore out, and I just want to get home, and I'm just going to be I'm talking about benefits of the church. I walked in this morning. I was tired in my body. I mean, I just wore out, but I got over there in the breakfast time. Folks started coming in. We started hugging necks and shaking hands, talking about the week. Service got to going this morning. Y'all got to singing. I got to preaching. Y'all got to helping me and God got to moving. That little girl got saved. And I'll just be honest, I, I felt strengthened in my spirit. I ended up going home not taking a nap like I thought I was going. I sat up and fellowship Brother Jack and ate dinner. Come back. God. I, you say, what's that? That's the benefits of the local church. I'm telling you, there are times you feel lower than a snake's belly in a wagon rut and you drag yourself in here, but you don't really feel it, but there's other people holding the rope and they're strong when you're not and you come in they're shouting and they're testifying and they're worshiping and it helps your spirit to go on for God tonight I say you're, you're to hold this rope for the benefits of the church you're to hold this rope not just for the benefits of the church you're to hold this rope because of what our basket carries what our basket carries, the Bible said here in the text, Saul had just got saved here just a few verses earlier. And the Bible said about Saul, Brother Doug, that he was a young man back over in chapter number 7. That ain't too much farther as far as timeline-wise from here. He's still a young man, Brother Mike Stogner. He's not just a young man. He's a young preacher. He's young. There's a young man. There's a young Christian in this basket. And these believers, this church, they saw the potential. They saw what could be in that basket. They said, y'all don't let go of this rope. Y'all hang on to this rope. There's something important in this basket. Oh, there's something important in this basket. There's a lot riding on the ministry in this basket. Don't let go. Don't let go. You say, preacher, why should we keep holding on to old time religion around here? Why should we keep holding on to old time preaching, old time standards and the the right kind of music and the right kind of ministry and the right kind of dress code and the right kind of praying and the right kind of talking and the right kind of fellowship. i tell you why. Look at what we got in our basket around here. We got a lot riding on us tonight. Matter of fact, matter of fact, I want you to do this. If you're 19 and down, if you are 19 and down in this building, I want you to stand up right where you are, all over the building. If you're 19 and down, I want you to stand up and stay standing. Now, I want y'all to stand up. Now, I want everybody to sit down, Chad Eagle. Praise God. <laughs> Miss Kim, do something with him. Now, I want y'all to look around this building. Look around this building. That's almost not quite half the congregation in here tonight. You say, what's that tell you? That tells me we got a whole lot in our basket tonight. Hey, hey, mama, hey, mama, hey, daddy. I know sometimes you get tired and wore out and you think it don't matter. Hold that rope. Look around. It matters tonight. Hey, papa, hey, grandma. I know you think it don't matter sometimes, but look around. It matters tonight. There's a lot of potential in our basket. There's a lot of power in our basket. There's a lot of 
because we can shoot straight in our basket. We got reason to hold the rope. Look what we carry on in our basket tonight. Y'all can sit down. Y'all can sit down. What I'm talking about tonight is after all, Brother Cody, after all of this testifying, this good singing and all that, I just thought, man, it's imperative on us to hang on to this. It's important. You say, why? Not just because the benefits we all get from it, but because what's in our basket tonight. I told you I was going to be quick, and I am. I'm not going to belabor this thing. I'm going to be done. We see not only the benefits of the church, we see what our basket carries. You say, why should I hold the rope? It's to block out the contenders. It's to block out those people that would try and crush what we're doing for God. Notice your text here, what the Bible said in verse 23 and 24. After that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying await was known of Saul. They watched the gates day and night to kill him. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Saul rehearses, Paul rehearses this in his life in 2 Corinthians 11. And he says this in verse 32 and 33. He said, in Damascus, the governor kept the city of the Damascenes with a garrison desirous to apprehend me. And through a wall in a window was I let down by the wall, listen, and escaped his Hands. In other words, because somebody was holding the rope, it allowed this young man who would have gotten absolutely crushed by the enemy to escape. If you don't think tonight that the enemy doesn't want to crush you and your family, sir, if you don't think that the enemy doesn't want to crush all these young people and all these adults in here, then you ain't looking around. I I need every mom and daddy to look up in here and understand something. If you think for a minute that that, uh, 45 minutes of preaching on Sunday morning and 45 minutes of Sunday school by their Sunday school teacher, that's an hour and a half on Sunday morning, and 45 minutes more on Sunday night, two hours and 15 minutes of preaching on Sunday and teaching on Sunday, and then another 45 minutes, that's three hours total, possibly a week of Bible preaching. If you think three hours a week is going to keep the devil at bay in your children's life after they're getting six to eight hours worth of internet and TV and, and, and public school system, whatever, brother, that, it, it's, it's not enough. I'm telling you, mom and daddy, you need to be holding the rope at the house. Make sure you keep them around the things of God at home and make sure they stay around the things of God every time. We, we was doing calendar meeting the other day and all the department heads and uh, from teen department and Brother Jack and the juniors and, and just and, and Brother John and Mr. Man and just looking at all the, the events this year. And I'll be honest, uh, we, we kind of start talking about every month and men's prayer and junior event and teen events and then revivals and uh, prayer nights and then uh, getting together together with the young people and all that. I thought to myself, man, they have a pile of stuff on our calendar. But then I thought to myself this, I'd sure a whole lot rather have my kids spending a lot of time around this than a lot of time around that out there. Say, what are you trying to do, Brother Kevin Stewart? I'm trying to hold the rope to block what the enemy's trying to do. If I let go of this rope, if I ain't here to hold the rope, what is that going to allow in our church and in our homes and our families? And we all tonight ought to make our mind up. We're going to just hold the rope in this dark place. It's a dark world and it's a dark place. And we ought to make our mind up. I was going to pass the rope around tonight, but I decided better against it. Uh, tonight, I got, I got a rope right here. You know what, I'm, what I want to what do? I'm going to spread this thing out on the altar. Take that thing, Zach, run it down that way. One of you other boys, take that rope, run it down that way. That thing's going to be down here. I wonder tonight, if you wouldn't come grab a hold of the rope. Just get you, a, just find you a place right in here somewhere and just say, by the good grace of God, me and my family is going to get a hold of the rope somewhere. I, I don't know what part of the rope that you get, but just make sure you got a hold of it somewhere. Don't you know one of them days? Don't you know, Brother David, one of them days, somebody after Apostle Paul turned into what he turned into, one of them fellas said, you know what? I held that rope for him. I was just a little part of that. 
Don't you know when that fella that was unnamed got to heaven, them three, four, five, six guys that was unnamed, when they got to heaven one day, the Lord said, thank you so much for holding that rope. They, they're not named. We don't know who they are. But they sure did make a difference in somebody's life because they hung on to that rope in a dark place tonight. Y'all, what God's done around here and what God's doing, we want to make sure we keep hanging on to it. You say, why? It benefits all of us. And it's a blessing to the future generations. We want to make sure we fight and combat against what the devil's trying to do in, in our church and in this world. Esther, help me up here tonight. Holding the rope in the dark place. Let's all stand tonight. Father, I pray that you'd bless this simple message from the word of God. Now, Lord, I know it was short. Lord, I, I intended for it to, uh, later on in the service to kind of be that way after I seen what you was doing. And I appreciate you moving in this place tonight. Lord, we prayed at the onset of the service that the spirit of God might move. And Lord, you have. And we want to give you the glory for that. God, thank you so much. I pray tonight that we get around the altar, find us a spot, say, Lord, help us hold the rope. Help us hold the rope. God, I pray it wouldn't just be words. I pray it wouldn't just be a concept or a thought, but it'd be real. Oh, God, the blessed consolation that we've felt in our soul tonight, we've heard in our ears tonight. Help us not to let that go by the wayside. God, when division or discord tries to seep up into our heart and do damage to the place where we hold the rope, help us cast it down in our soul. The devil tries to lead us astray. Help us, Lord, to rebuke it in Jesus' name and walk with God. Help us tonight as Bible Missionary Baptist Church to grab firm hold of the rope. When one of us is weak, the other will be strong. Help us tonight, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.